Good day. This is the Eye of the Storm podcast with the big picture technical update for the NASDAQ 100. It's being recorded on Sunday, March the 10th. And today I'm again being joined by my colleague, Sasha Goring, and we will be presenting our counts, uh, both what I am considering my preferred count and then also what I would consider my alternate count. So both are going to be updated today. One thing that's really presenting a little bit of a challenge for us is the fact that the contract rolled. So we're now done with March and we're trading out in June 2024 on a contract basis of the future. Now, we could present this also on the NDX and I may do that later. But right now we wanted to present our update, which we are uh, doing together. And that is always going to be involving the futures market. So we're going to continue to talk about the future. I'm again, just going to present a quick update on my preferred count. And then we're going to turn it over to Sasha, who will then give his update also on his preferred count. But what we're counting up towards remains the same. I have to say it remains the same. What level it gets to is what's going to be the difference between is it com what it's completing. So it's a, becoming extremely interesting. And Sasha and I have discussed in, in really great depth all of these different moves. And we realize that, yep, we both still have a difference of what actually we'll be finishing once we get there. But we're going to go because what happens, unfortunately, both counts will go together and then what the resulting would be if I'm looking for a primary C wave down and Sasha's looking for an intermediate fourth wave down, we're going to continue to run these side by side. So that's really kind of our underlying message is that the market itself is really dictating what comes next. But because it's such a larger degree, we have to run both together side by side until one breaks. So if it's going to be a primary C wave down, we'll know because it'll break below the context of what a even an intermediate fourth wave should look like and, and finish at. Because again, a C wave is going to be five down and an intermediate fourth wave would be three down. So again, we're going to run them side by side, folks, because that's, that is just going to present the best picture for all of us. So again, let me get started. So I am still considering this. My primary uh, preferred count is still that we're in an, a primary B wave to the upside. Now, if I just bring this out real quick to the daily chart, actually take it one more because we're advancing far enough. I come out to my weekly chart. You can see that it's still primary A and we're still in that primary B consisting of an intermediate A and B. We're in still intermediate wave C. In our mind, intermediate wave C will consist of five waves of minor degree. And so I have, let me bring it back down at least to that four hour chart. So I have what minor one, two, three, and four done. And we're in that minor fifth wave. Now, again, we had initially, uh, both of us were initially counting this finishing fifth wave up, right? Whether it's a minor or a minute, what we were considering it is that it was forming an ending diagonal triangle. Well, that started to break down basically within how the depth of this fourth wave, and there was a couple other things that got broken. And so it ceased to really function as an ending diagonal triangle that would have started. So let's just understand the starting point under the starting point of January the 5th, 2024. So whether it's a minor or a minute fifth wave mm -hmm. is actually a small point to kind of to go with, because what's more important to realize is that we're in that final fifth wave up. So whether I'm counting it as a minute or whether we're counting it as a minor, we've done one, two, three, and four of that final wave. And so we've taken away the fact that we believed it was an ending diagonal. And therefore, it's just a straight one, two, three, four, and we're in that fifth and final wave. Now, that's the wave where, again, Sasha and I are in agreement that that's the wave that is forming an ending diagonal. And it's actually much more appropriate. And it would have been appropriate in the larger degree as well, 
but here it's the final fifth. So it's very appropriate to finish up in a blow off type of a move that forms a triangle. Now remember in this triangle, even if it's an ending contracting, right? So it's gonna wedge, waves one, three, and five will all be three wave structures, but we're constantly gonna be looking for wave A of one and wave C of one to form five waves. And then the same thing in wave three and the same thing in wave five. But it'll wedge, so the difference is gonna come that wave three should exceed the high of wave one. And as you're gonna see, it already has, but wave five may or may not exceed the high of wave three. It's gonna, because remember, we're diagonally, we got a triangle constantly wedging towards the pinnacle. All right, so with inside, so if I've got one, two, three, and four, I'm gonna come right down to my hourly chart. What we got going on, ABC, wave one, ABC, wave two, one, two, three, four, five to form wave A of wave three. Now this did move to a new high above the, the finishing point of wave one and what we're labeling as wave one. It is just wave A. Now this is where it starts to get a little sticky because we had a very strong sell-off on Friday. And it, it, when it started, it was not going to stop. And really, what really kind of fell in is for the NASDAQ, they started to really hit the Magnificent Seven, the ones that have been pumped up. So it, and, and in particular, they really went after NVIDIA. Now, NVIDIA closed down in our regular session 51 after reaching yet another new all-time high during the session. So it was extremely interesting. Now, if we start, and, and then after the uh, regular close on Friday, we, we always have that extra hour, they continue to sell NVIDIA. So what we're both counting as the possibility of being a B wave, wave B of wave three of the triangle, it, 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 likely has some additional downside to do. But there's going to be levels that it really should not break below. And those levels right now are not as clear as one would think. But if the market comes in and gets hit as hard as they did on Friday, and we drop in terms of the NASDAQ, that we drop an additional hmm, uh I think it was over 200 points, then we're going to be pretty far down. Now, the other thing to bear in mind, because of the contract role, and this is where Sasha's chart's going to come in very, very handy, because Sasha's already got uh, the, the June contract all labeled. And for me, uh, I do have a June contract, but it's so thin, I need it to be, I need it to flip over and then for all of my charts to you know be continuous so that my all of my labeling is going to be continuous. But like here, the March contract finished at 18,056. The June contract finished at 18,303. So wherever this market is going to start, that's its starting point. 18,303, right there. So whether it's going to go down or whether it's going to go up, the starting point is 18,303. So, and and you'll see on Sasha's chart, it's the same pattern. It's just that this is all the way down here. So there's a $250 difference between the March and the June contract. So bear in mind that really presents its own challenges. So again, my moving forward outlook remains that we're still in the process of putting in this diagonal triangle to finish the fifth wave. And in my case, it's going to be a minute five to finish a minor five to finish an intermediate wave C to finish a primary B wave. It's a little bit different still 
all the way up to, to that intermediate degree. So Sasha and I are pretty much in agreement on everything below, and it's at that intermediate degree that we have a difference. And his would be that's going to finish intermediate wave three. And I'm going to wrap up my portion right here because I want to give Sasha as much time as he needs to kind of go and talk what's actually going on now. So, Sasha, I'm going to stop my share and say good morning or good evening to you. Sasha Sasha resides in Germany. So, yeah, exactly. So better for me to say good evening to you. Guys. It is going to be better for you to say good evening. <laughs> Absolutely right. So I'm going to stop my share. You can go ahead and put up your chart. Yes, sir. And so, right. So it should be up now. Um, yeah. So uh, regarding the last two times I was doing a podcast with Michael, nothing has really changed in the bigger view. So I consider being in a uh, cycle wave three, still in play, close to the end. So I'm resuming cycle wave one, two is done. We have the cycle wave three, cycle wave four to come, cycle wave five to come, which finishing, in my view, in this alternate count, the super cycle wave one. Um, in that cycle wave three, we have five wave of primary degree. Which are finished, or which is finished, the third, the fourth, and we are the play of the fifth wave up. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit soon because, due to all these uh, drawings on my chart, it's not very easy to see it now. But uh, once this move is complete, I will remove a lot so it's getting clearer and clearer all the, um, in the future. Let me just zoom in and uh, I go on the daily chart now. So, even there's a lot of drawing. <laughs> Okay, um, assuming that the October low of 2022 is the low of the or is the finishing point of the primary degree fourth wave down here. I'm going to put that over here so that you know I'm, what I'm talking about. Assuming that, or the idea is that we are in the primary fifth wave up, which is up here. So in that view, we have done intermediate wave one, two, and we are now in the intermediate wave, third wave, or the, inter the intermediate three, to be honest, better to say, followed by an intermediate wave four, which was Michael also talking about, that's on my chart here. Followed also by an intermediate wave five, uh, yeah, intermediate wave five, to finish the cycle third wave up here. So let's hop in. Um, yes, um, let me just remove my drawings. So now, so intermediate wave one, intermediate wave two done, intermediate wave three. So consisting, you can see here, um, um, including five waves of primary, de uh, minor degree, sorry, five waves of minor degree, which is done, the three, the four, and we are in the minor fifth wave. So let's zoom in here. So we are in the minor fifth wave up, which is done minute wave one, minute wave two, minute wave three, minute wave four. We are in the ending stages of minute wave five. So, and this is the whole part I'm talking about here from that low here. So this part I'm talking about now, I want to talk about now. Um, I'm going to zoom in again because there is a lot. I'm going on the four hour for now. So, again, zooming in, this is the minute fifth wave here we are talking about today because, um, yeah, it's a very, very interesting and very, very, yeah, <laughs> strange, but it's okay. Let's do it. Complex. So, I think the, the English word would be complex because it most certainly complex, is yes, extremely complex. complex. Extremely complex, yes. Yeah. So, regarding we are in the minute fifth wave, we are underlined by five waves of min minuet degrees. In my view, the minuet wave one, minuet wave two, minuet wave three is done, and the minuet wave four is done. So, and that part I'm talking about now is the minuet wave five. So the last leg up to finish that sequence up. And um, as Michael was talking about the last time, we were considering that whole minute wave five as a diagonal which got invalidated at that minute wave four low here because it was 
yeah, it was it didn't fit anymore. You know, that's that's the problem. And um, so we 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 moved that triangle, and we consider or the idea is now that the last leg up, the minuet wave five, this one here is the diagonal. So I'm giving the benefit of the doubt that due to the contract change, with that huge gap we are having here or the 250 point gap, it's. Yeah, I don't know why. Technically, it's not possible for TradingView to do that, but TradingView, hey, maybe you can bring out some kind of a solution in the future because it's really, really <laughs> not easy to do that uh, TA on a chart with a huge gap. So, And also, what you can see, that that spike here did or the run out of my wedge here, of my triangle wedge. So I'm giving it the benefit of the doubt. Take the 250 points off, and we are directly inside again. But I will just talk about and to continue about that we do in the triangle pattern forming five waves. Each five, each each waves under the in, the in the triangle count needs to be an A, needs to be three waves. So A, B, C for the one. Then we have a A, B, C for the two. And in my view, we did now finish the A wave of the third wave should be following by a B wave down in an ABC structure, so also a three wave move. And then again, an ABC up to finish the three. Afterwards, we should get an ABC down for the four, and again an ABC up for the five to finish that whole sequence to the upside. And afterwards, I'm gonna talk about that in a few minutes. Afterwards, we should get a sell off to the downside in the intermediate wave four but I'm gonna zoom out and show it to you one, one second, uh, one minute later. So let me just do my removing here again. Ugh, I don't want that. Hello, that one, that one, that one, that one. So because all these drawings make me confusing and make makes you also confusing, so <laughs> it's, yeah. Okay, assuming that wave one is in of that fifth of that minuet wave five here of the minuet minuet wave five. So sub minuet sub minuet wave one is done. Very bad words for, for English for German speaking English. So sub minuet wave one is done. Sub minuet wave two is done. We are now in the sub minuet wave three, consisting of an ABC, as I said. And I'm thinking, and I'm I would assume, or the idea is now that we are in this B wave of the three. So the B wave needs to be an ABC down, and it needs to somehow also fit in that triangle forming because the problem I have now is also that gap I was talking about. And the problem is, or the more important problem is giving levels now because I can assume levels, but re remember please, all this here was pre-contract role. So it's very, I have no uh, points to add at the moment in this wedge at the moment. So I need that B wave down first. Afterwards, without that B wave finished, I cannot, because you know, you have to understand the contract roll was here in that night on the evening of the 8th of March, 24. And um, without the the um, the opposite of of that gap, so this B wave forming, I have no clues to add any points at the moment. And this is a little bit disgusting because, yeah, I want to give you some levels for now, but I, miss, I, I can't do it, right? I can't do it now in this little time sequence here. I need this B wave first. Otherwise, I have no reference points to, 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 to measure any ex, ex, extension to the upside. And yeah, so please, please understand that. And I think on the next update, everything will be better because we have more data of that actual June contract. There's just this spike up and the sell off. Where where would where would that B wave touch the um that bottom trend line? Yeah, the the bottom trend line is around yeah, depends on how how we open, you know, but I think the trend line is in the range between 18027 to 18054 right around. now just as a suggestion yes sir um since wave b basically is quote unquote correcting wave a yeah if you were just to run from 
from the bottom of two to the top of a just retracement sure yeah and and see how they, where they cross they cross right there yeah we have the 78.6 retracement here so that could be yeah very good target good hit michael thanks for that or even <laughs> even even the one above 618 618 could also be a target yes so that we are forming the abc correct yeah. exactly could be a good target um for now but i really yeah this is on the lower time frame but i really want that d wave you know you just understand i want to give accurate targets this is a very good point you can take the retracements of that a wave sure but it can also be that we really come completely down even spike below that trend line right. due, to the, due to the to the contract rule it can right. also be and still consider this as a b wave of the and, and it would be considered an irregular exactly yes yeah, yes. that, that that fits as well. So yes, um, I, I really stand in agreement with Sasha. It presents a very confusing picture, and we must consider all possibilities. Yeah. So exactly. why why we can't pinpoint and say, gee, this is where it should go? We can, and again, if you just put up those retracements and then look at one point two three six, one point three eight two. I have to add them. Um, they actually would kind of fall if you run that. Which you said one one point three eight two and one point what do you want? Two three six. Uh, I don't have it. Um, no, I could... don't have it. All right, one point three eight two works. But let me just do one thing. Uh, one point three eight two and one point what do you want? One two point... three six. Two three six. I'm just gonna do that one and it's gonna see. Okay, it would be here. That would be the price at seventeen seven thirty to seventeen six fifteen. And do me one more favor. Yes. Go from go from the low of the previous C where you have wave two. So we're complete. We're we're including all of wave A. Yeah. So it's still it's still really folks. It's it's about the same. Let me just. Mess. But in all honesty, I think both Sasha and I would be like okay this is not this is not you know again what Sasha is talking about and it's so very very true each each of us as analysts we have to consider the look and the feel it is something that that Elliot himself wrote extensively about yeah and it really I mean that's what Sasha was using the look and the feel to to, to talk about that it's not a diagonal triangle on that larger degree that it, but it is within this degree but then once again it's going to be our individual discretionary use of how we want to count Elliot as if it really starts to break down from here so we're not discounting anything and that's what I want to make clear too we're presenting you that, and, and Sasha is doing a, an exquisite job of presenting the technical picture going up. But what if the market just decides to just halt, butt, and drop strongly again tomorrow? Yeah. And we so, really don't have that crystal ball. It can happen because exactly. we are so close to a top. It's, you know, even if the other possibility is what I just saw or what I'm thinking of, is possibly that the wave won, but it would not fit to the contract road. So we have on the on the previous, on the March contract, we had this, we, we had to make a higher high against that high here to put the wave one here. And maybe we are just in a part of a, the wave two, but I don't think so. So that's why I leave it here because regarding to the March contract, we had to take out that high and it's, it didn't happen. Right. So we opened in the night. It was after op after the opening again on. Um, and it was due to the session. contract roll. Boom. We had it up. You there know, there is a possibility that it may, it may, but it, even like Sasha's really leaning towards, it's very, it, it's not a strong possibility, folks. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then we still have only the third, the fourth, and the fifth wave, and that should complete, complete that move up. And it should wedge on this diagonal. Because I can still only count three ways. It's an ABC still. I, even if I that low here was much too deep for this to be a part of, you know, that this is belonging together. This is right. separated, definitely. This right. move is a new move. So the problem, or not the problem, is I assume, and the idea is really that wave one is done. And this irregular based to the March contract and the June contract. I don't consider this as an irregular. It's just there due to the contract rule. And um, 
this is the B wave of the three. So consisting of A, B, C. Mm -hmm. And then it's done. And then we got the four and the five. And we are really close to that to that uh, finishing point. Really. Yeah. And uh, then I'm going to zoom out because I think this is clear here. So very, very close to a topping, to topping point here. Um, wave three is not done. Wave four, wave, wave five, and then it's done. And we can say intimidate wave three is done. Minor, minor, minor fifth wave is done. Minute five and my minuet five. So then we have this part together. It's done. And I'm going to zoom back out on the four hour chart for you to see. And so this is now the part where we have, or we're going to see which is, uh, which is the count we should take as a, as a preferred or not preferred count. Because I think this is a very, very important point here. Um, remember, please, also that this is a moving target. The wave four is a moving target due to the yeah. upside. <laughs> I, mean, you know, it's, I it's, like the way you say that. It's moving. like you, it is a move. <laughs> and try to catch it. Yeah, I, yeah, I can move it around, but I know only that the fourth, that um, an intermediate wave four target when this top is in place because it's yeah. moving with the price up. You know, yeah, because it's correcting that third wave. Yeah, or that yeah that that third wave here, or yeah, 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 exactly. And when we have that top in place here, I can give you some measurement or retracement for that wave four. And this is an important point. When the market is holding in kind of that area when which we which we define then uh, later on when we when the top is in here, if the market holds here and goes to the upside, then I think this is going to switch mm -hmm. from my primary primary count mm -hmm. because. When we consider that B wave up, and uh, which is really on the table here, and we are expecting then a C wave down, much bigger, yeah, it cannot hold here. This is not existing. This target, right? It's right. really not existing. I mean, there are fib levels up uh, on the way to the downside compared to that move or compared to that long move, but we really have to see. And I, I think when we hold that area, it's gonna be, yeah, we can assume. That, would you would you want to extend that window that you have? It's a great window, but to actually come all the way down to almost fourteen thousand, because wouldn't that be the the fourth wave of one lesser? Yeah, yeah, ex exactly. It can, of course, of course, yes. Okay. And so right. these are the first targets. But uh, remember what Elliot told us. Also, is we come down to the previous fourth wave of one lesser degree, right. which right. is here. Exactly. But we do have that stronger potential, and everything remains in place in terms of preferred and alternate. Everything yes. stays the same. So we got a lot to go through together to really come up yes, to to, exactly. to before a, a stronger, longer term count. So in other words, that big count. So because I think such of what we get is a lot of position traders that are going to be like, well, you know, what, you know, that's, they're looking for some definition in terms of how deep or what a larger count is going to be. Yeah. And I just want to address that for just a moment, because I think we're not, we're both suggesting, what we're both suggesting is that no matter what larger degree comes into play, we are reaching a, at least a midterm, a medium term high. Yes. We do really. But we're looking for downside, and that downside is going to be strong. So whether you're you're trying to position something for the next five years, well, you know that part we can't cover here, but and, we can cover an immediate, the next. You know, if we're looking at this long, because this is a long term chart, folks. Yes. This this <laughs> inner this third wave that Sasha's is trying to to finish up here started in. October of 2022, is that correct, Sasha? Yes, sir, yes, yes. Right. So, you know, if we're looking at a wave four, we've done those timescales before. What is 382 to 618? So let me just do one thing, Michael, and take the measurements. Sure. Let's just, let's just assume we are, we just regarding that that market or that price we are at now, it's a, it's a drop about 3,000, 3,132 points just to get in this area and it's not guaranteed that we come down further you know the the the, the range from that previous way low up to here is at now it's 4600 points 
in between regarding this is the <clears throat> this is just intermediate wave for retracement, it can still be that we are correcting over 33% of the downside. And, and the minimum is 38.2. Yes. Let me just do something. There you go. You know, and this is this is the point. Um beautiful. Thank you. That's perfect. And it's yeah, I'm assuming that we come up a little bit higher. So we have the first target is could look, I have to just put it also down. Um, I'm assuming now that we have a little bit more upside to do. Right. Let me just check where I have my, my point here. Yeah, I'm going to give it a little bit more to the upside because we have two more waves to do. And the first target comes in, the really first target comes in at 15,814. And let's right. just assume from here, it's a drop about nearly 3,000 points. You know, I mean, <clears throat> when this count here is, I don't want to say the right one, but when this count comes to play here, that we just have a healthy shallow, not, not a shallow, but we have a retracement here, you can see that. But when this count is in play, we have all through, if, if you don't, if you want to hear it or not, nearly a, a, a drop of, yeah, three 3,000 points, I guess, minimum. Because we can assume that target range also come down to 14,850 for now, because I don't know how far this wave is exceeding to the upside. This target is really moving. I can show you that because whenever we go higher, this target is moving. The retracement, of course, because you are taking retracement or you want to correct that move up and it's always moving with the market. And when, see now, I, and we are now at the actual price at what was it, 18303.50. And we come, up, we come up and I guess we assume we have, yeah, five, 600, 700 points maybe to do again. That mm -hmm. would be, mm -hmm. I just say 700%. Then we are having a correction minimum of 3,165 points. So 20% yeah. sell up. I mean, that's huge, very, very strong. It will be there. But in that count, we really, really, really have to hold here in this area. You know, we have the, the typical way four target is between the 38.2 and the 0 0.5 retracement. Right, right. There you go. So and then we, we still have that five wave structure to move up to finish the cycle, cycle, uh, cycle third wave and the primary five intermediate wave five here. Right. You know, it all fits. It really all fits. So, and this is just also just demonstrating, folks, the kind of the difficulty in times and trying to just piece together when the market is truly in a topping process. These yes. are blow off moves we're seeing in a lot of these individual stocks. And so trying to piece that together, it's like, okay, what are you going to do tomorrow? If I'm showing we still need to go up, are you going to come back in and buy the you-know-what out of this, out of <laughs> NVIDIA? Uh, are you going to continue to try to slingshot Apple up out of the basement, so to speak? Or you know, We have so much going on that it it just, what's the mood of the day? You know, what's, what's the, the mood du jour, as we say? So... I, Sasha, I just think it's like what you're presenting is so it's really clean. Even let though me just it's, add it's one not, thing, Michael. It's let it's me, it, it's sorry. it's yeah. Sorry, sorry, brother. Sorry. Let me just add one thing because I have want to just present one level maybe because whenever you take, I mean, you are all traders and you can do it on your own. Whenever you take the retracements and we are breaking the sixty-one point eight yeah. level to the downside, I mean that is the point. I would suggest that this was the B wave. So that you have maybe for now, considering we're moving up 700 points um, from, from that high we are at now, right. the four, three and the five, then the downside is limited really to the 61.8 to the at 13,897. When we break that to the downside, I think we're in a C wave down. Right. Okay. Sorry, that's what I want to add. I don't want no, to- No, I think that was words. perfect. That was perfect. That just clean, it just, Ties it all up and cleans it up. Yes, um, sir. Before we go, first of all, thank you, Sasha. You're welcome. Thank you for that you for update. It, again. it has not, oh, this is going to be regular. So no invitation <laughs> needed. No nice. invitation needed. This is, they're going to now expect us <laughs> to okay. doing this. Um, but thank you. Thank you for taking the time and thank you for such a clean, detailed chart. 
Thank you. And thank you for the layout and thank you for the, the presentation because it's very it was very clean and, and hopefully everybody understood. Yeah. And hopefully so, everybody also understands when sometimes we I have some hiccups because it's very, very not normal for me to do these presentations online with, with Michael and for, for such a big audience. And, oh, uh, you were perfect. Don't okay. Don't, no, you no need to say you were clean. That was all nice. It was all good. Thank you. Thank but you. what I want to toss in here before we go today, folks, is that Sasha and I are doing the logical signals dash trading dot com trade room, our trade room. And um again, even during the day, it's not easy. But I want to tell everybody, we have part of what I invited new members and uh, the and that still remains open. We are still accepting new members into the trade room. And our, our cost is $299 a month. But here is the challenge that I put out that I am and, and now from last time that I mentioned it, each day that new members have been in the room i have and it's through and then some my my charts are the ones that uh or the trading are the ones that are showing i have successfully done in excess of actually 300 dollars, but as a minimum 300 dollars per day so i stand and i say please come and join us because we are trading the nasdaq and we will expand and include analysis on the S&P if we had enough people that actually trade the S&P right now we focus on the nasdaq and uh, successfully producing at least at least three hundred dollars per day. So we're covering the cost of the trade room, and then plus, and then plus. For example, not within the trade room hours, but on Friday, uh, I I was by the end of the day, and I'm only trading not a huge account. So I only trade a maximum of be you know maybe if I'm really pushing it up to 10 contracts, which I rarely ever do, because it's it's a, it starts as a $50,000 account. So within that parameter, on Friday, I, because it was a great day and we had a lot of movement, uh, ended up over $1,300. So the, the money is there. And again, so it's just how we trade, what we trade, uh, using good risk management, and this is all the things that we talk about when we're doing it. So again, the invite is out. Those that may have an interest, I am fulfilling the, not necessarily a pledge, but the goal. And the goal is to uh, produce at least uh, a $300 profit per day. So there you go. I'm going to put that on there so, it's, so that it'll be there on the finished product. So, and again, it's Sasha and I together. So you get this detailed analysis, not on a four hour chart, not on a one hour chart, but he breaks it down and puts it on a 15 minute to a five minute chart. So this is very, very usable. We work up all these levels. He works up all the levels intraday. Yes. So please come and come and trade with us. And uh, again, if you have an interest, go to www.logicalsignals.com dash trading.com and you will see the trade room link uh join us and we'll make sure that you are a part of our discord trade room and once again sasha thank you so much thank you michael for coming in and uh folks this will also count as there won't be an additional update today uh and so our next update will be the elliott wave update and that will come on monday march the 11th have a good afternoon everybody Yes, from my side as well. Thank you. Okay, we got to go down to the bottom. There, come on, there.